Hello, my name is Bart Brecka, and this is the second installment of the Clay Bake Challenge from Product Design Forums, where I'm going to remodel the uh, clay porcelain glass uh, water pitcher. We'll say tea pitcher. The uh, Product Design Forums challenge that I presented was one to get a variety of different software packages to perform uh, Katia, SolidWorks, uh, Rhino, Alias, <clears throat> and uh, on this in this video, I'm going to present from scratch the the uh, clay porcelain pot. Okay, my first my first step will be to create a revolve, but before I do so, I'm going to create uh, a parametric bounding box or a lattice part part of a lattice structure. A lattice structure would be a a compound version of a of a of a uh, bounding box. Okay, so we'll just make it about that big. Now this uh, bounding box can parametrically update. Okay, I'm hitting Control G with my fingers. My second sketch <coughs> will be the start of a the revolved form, and I'll use a. Three degree curve, I'm just using some of the terms from Alias, and uh, using taking advantage of the parent-child constraints, I'm locking it to the outside. There, I'm going to go ahead and force uh, tangency inside a sketcher to the top. We'll turn that to a construction curve. Okay, and check out of that. Then exercise my geometry so you can see how it it uh, will uh, eventually update. My second sketch. <coughs> Will, uh, third sketch will be the uh, bottom where I like to come back in and align it as a separate step here and force tangency at the top force that to a construction geometry I'm trying to race the clock to do this all in five or ten minutes my fourth sketch you see how that works I can sort of grab that and tug and pull on that I'm hoping to kind of show how uh, inside of Pro Engineer Wildfire 3 um, I can parametrically prove form which is something I think the industrial designers would want to do in uh, a software like SolidWorks where you can't really drag drag that geometry uh, just yet. I'm sure in a later version SolidWorks tends to uh, catch up pretty quick. We'll see how if they will look at this video and maybe take a hint in this uh, step, I'll force tangency here. This is one of my favorite things to do inside of a parametric modeler because I can, I can really get sort of some of the alias functionality. Yet I can, I can control. Notice how this dimension, the 197, is dimensioned to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and dimension, dimension it to the center of the, of the two vertices there. I'm going to make that a, a horizontal dimension. Okay, now. Now I can double click on that and get in, take it back to the three degree curve, notice the two CVs, and tug and pull on that geometry like that. And now when I exercise this geometry, no matter what I do over here, my radius keeps primarily the same form, which is pretty exciting for me. Especially when I go back in hindsight, that fifteen minutes before I send it off for tooling, I can make a pretty significant change and, and witness the entire geometry update. Okay, so now my uh, third 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 uh, effort will be to revolve a surface. Mm, let's revolve it about the center here at 180 degrees instead of 360. And uh, there's my half of the water pitcher. But look how I get sort of this parametric update ability here. Kind of uh, always found that this modifiability it's it's not how fast you model something it's how fast can you change it 20 times my next step will be to create an ISDX feature and this ISDX feature will will be the basic bake if you will the glass overlay okay so what I've done is I forced this curve not tangent to that surface on purpose so I'm going to go back and uh, in the second step and force the surface the resultant surface 
tangent and it's going to force that curve tangent. I'm going to go ahead and lock a curve here, planar, snap the end. I'll take the, uh, the bottom there and, and force that tangent or, or maybe even curvature if I so desired. Let's force, let's see this curve should be a free curve. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, force this end implied tangent we say in pro engineer normal but in alias you call that implied tangent because your intention is to go ahead and mirror that geometry this uh, last curve I'm going to go ahead and edit it relative to that plane that I just made highlighted that way um, I'm moving it relative to that plane so I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit it relative to this plane and then just take the, the datum curve and pull on it okay now I'm going to go ahead and build a surface and if uh, if you look you'll notice the surface connectivity icon, let's make them a little smaller so we can see them, doesn't show tangency. When I force it tangent, it prompts me, uh, are you sure the curves, underlying curves aren't tangent? That's kind of cool. I'm, I, that might actually cause some bad habits on some beginning surfacing people, but uh, it's pretty cool to see that work. I've not seen another program uh, do that. Now, now my uh, next uh, step for the ISDX feature is to force a curve tangent uh, uh, on a curve on surface tangent at the end. Uh, I'm going to force that perpendicular to the end. Try that one more time. Normal to the surface. Okay. And down here, I'm going to force it tangent to the curve, tangent to the edge, and then pull it out. That way, I get to control how much tangency occurs. Now, to be really cool, um, as I say, to sit at the cool table at GM. And in terms of surface modeling, I'd want to get this geometry to ride up into that area without actually adding an internal edit point. That uh, internal edit point would give me, in alias speak, a two three degree curves span together as a two span curve. So let's see if I can get that curve to sort of ride up into that area there. It's not going. Let's force this one down some more. In my third installment, I show how to control this geometry parametrically, which I think is uh, one of the strengths of, of ISDX, being able to kind of do both. I'm going to force this curve relative to this base plane outward to the right, which kind of brings that curve inward like I was trying to do. Okay, so there's my, there's my geometry. I'm going to go ahead and, and trim out of that. I'm going to go ahead and trim this using an ISDX the ISDX curve on surface using an outside surface trim. Let's merge the two. And I'll, I'll mirror that geometry. Go ahead and merge that geometry with, with the mirror geometry. And I typically don't use thicken, but I'm going to use thicken in this case. Let's merge that. And I'll use thicken to in the geometry. I typically don't use thicken in a production model, but in this case I'll go ahead and make it 0.24 for a thickness. Let's see if we can get a full round on that geometry. Looks like it might be a little taut in that area. I'm going to try to go ahead and get a full round to work. When I speak at the Pro Engineer user conferences around the country, this is models I, I try to do at the last minute here. Let's force that uh, full round. Let's see if that work. Okay. And there's my uh, second installment of the clay bake challenge. In the third installment, I'll parametrically modify how much the bake uh, occurs before it gets fired in a kiln. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Bart Brecka. I hope you uh, enjoy the video and uh, take a look at some more. I plan on building others.